is Jaisa, and I wanted to come on here and record. Shalom. Okay, so my name is Jaisa, and I wanted to come on here and record a vision that I had a while back. Um, I got the courage to do it because everybody else is sharing their prophetic dreams and visions. Might as well share mine, right? So anyway, so I had a vision that the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, gave me before I had came into the truth. I came into the truth around April of this year. Um, yeah, he, he brought me into it. But before he brought me into it, I had a vision of what my cousin, who was in the truth for four years, she believes that this is the kingdom of heaven. So I had this dream, um, this vision, sorry. I had this vision of me. Uh, the setting was me in this unfamiliar place. I've never been to this place before, but I, I remember standing on the outside of this gigantic kingdom it was this beautiful kingdom and the roads the uh the pavements were gold and most of the building was gold uh this um this castle was was gold it was gold everywhere and i was just marveled at how beautiful it was and i was a part of this uh this vision i was actually there with uh these other people so as i'm looking around i'm marveled i see a gang of black people it's just a lot of them a whole bunch of them and um now i see myself with them and i'm not myself i'm not i'm not who i used to be like i i was i was beautiful i mean not to say i wasn't beautiful now but i was like really attractive and they were attractive too everybody was super flawless and um, amazing and everybody um, was married all the women were married that was something that, that stood out everybody was married and we were all grateful and um, happy being under our husbands and uh, there was a bunch of children in the streets they were like running around laughing and having fun and they had no worries. Like, we, we didn't have any worries. They didn't have no worries. It was all beautiful. And then um, I remember that we all had one mind. All the black people, we all had one mind. Even the children who were born, they all had one mind as well. And um, they all knew exactly what, what it was that we did to cause us to go into bondage. For all these, you know, throughout history, like we went through bondage and we all knew what the other races did to us. And it was just a strong hatred. Like we hated them. And but we loved each other. We loved each other and we really loved each other. Like I've never seen us love each other so much. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. We, we loved each other, but we hated everybody else. And um, and we were all immortal. Like, it was people who were, like, 100 years old, but they didn't look 100 years old. They looked very extremely young. Like, they looked like they were in their 20s. They were so young looking. And, um, but we were the only ones who were like that. Everybody else wasn't like that. And, but you could decide to die if you wanted to. If you didn't want to live, you could decide to die. You, you could make that choice. But anyway, uh, that was also something that was very, that stood out a lot in a, a vision. And then on one side of the vision, um, so we're, we're in this, uh, like I said, it's like this kingdom looking thing. Like it's very beautiful. And we were there, we were there walking amongst it, you know, living amongst it. And then on the other side, it was a group of white people, like a lot of white people, actually, they were behind this fence, like this gate, like this really nice gate. They were behind it and they didn't get to enter. Um, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking they didn't get to enter, but we got to enter um, on the other side. And they were just really vexed. They were so jealous. They were so jealous to where they had strong hatred as well. Like the same way we had one mind as black people, they had one mind as white people. 
they hated our ass. Like, they hated the fact that we were, um, you know, I don't know, like, they were just really jealous. And it was some who, who were very, like, remorseful for what they did to us. They, they, like, were very ashamed. And then it was other white people who were plotting. They were plotting on how to take over again. And they were, like, plotting in secrecy. And they would try to, like, um, carry out their plans, but it would always fall through. It would never um, get carried out. Um, so then, so then the scene, the scene changed, and then I'm, uh, we're on this. So I'm looking at, I'm no longer a part of the vision, but I'm looking at this like this spacecraft looking thing, and it's a bunch of black people that's about to get off of it. But before they got off of it, before they even got to this other place, this other nation. Um, it was like a, it was like a, a, a nation where it was a bunch of like Chinese looking people with flat faces and big ass heads. Um, it was, we had went there and, um, they had got word that we were coming and they were super excited for our arrival. They were so excited. They're like, Oh my God, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. And they got everything ready for us to come. They got like the best of wine, the best wine, the best food, the best of everything because they knew that we were coming and they were just super excited. And then they, the, everybody who was Asian, like gathered around waiting for us to come. It was so many, so many of them. And then we touched down and they got off this aircraft thing. And then, um, now I'm a part of the vision again. So I'm getting off the aircraft and I'm walking with my husband. Um, he's in front of me and, uh, they started bowing all of the people all of these flat faced bitches all started bowing they were all bowing and they were just like all on their knees and they started like kissing you know uh, my husband's feet and uh, and other men they started kissing their feet and um we just started walking or whatever and uh it was very clear it was very clear like um this something that stood out in in this particular vision they were saying that it's either, it's two things. It's, it's one of, it's one or two things of, of the reason why we go to visit other nations. One of the reasons could be because they're coming for correction. The black people were coming to correct them. That stood out. And there was another reason that they were so excited about whenever they heard that we were coming to like give them gifts or to, to bless them. They were super excited. So it was one of two things. We were coming for correction or we were coming to bless you. So when we were coming to bless them, they were so excited. They, they still, you know, got everything ready, even if they were coming. They, they didn't know whether we were coming for correction or we were coming for um, blessings. They always acted the same way. They were super excited and everybody reverenced, like, the black people. And everybody was on, a, on like, had their faces towards the ground and they were all bowing and they were super excited because the the men would bless them they they would come in like give them blessings and all these different things so that was the end of um of the vision i just felt like i should share it because it's been heavy on my mind but i didn't i feel like it wasn't my place to share it but my cousin told me to share it because she was saying that 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 sounds just like the kingdom of heaven. So I decided to go ahead and share it. And I hope that this helps um, anybody else who needed some encouragement or whatever. And um, I would also like to get some edification on, on this uh, vision. Cause I'm not, it's not very clear to me, especially someone who just came into the truth. So if you um, would like to share my video, please go ahead and do so. And please, um, please give me some, some help. And with that being said, thank you for watching it. Shalom. Shalom. I want to start off by saying Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham Rekak Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word and sincerity and the truth. I'm the brother Kotas Sayan, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, with another lesson, with another video. And Lord willing, this video is edifying. Gone. So what you just saw, 
uh, before I started this video, is a video of a woman of the nation of Israel that had a vision, and her name is Yaisa. Yaisa. So, what I sometimes like to do is to go into the meaning of a person's name. And that comes from the nomen est omen. That's a, how you call it? That's a saying. And that saying means the name is assigned. So it's a, it's kind of a prediction of what you, what your life is going to be like. The name speaks for itself. So the elders always talk about that also, nomen omen, you know, so nomen is omen. And with this sister, with this Ahwat, I went into her name. So I looked it up, what it means. And of course, maybe her parents had a specific name for her or they, cho they chose that or that they maybe combined two names or whatnot, you know, Israelites like to do that. But this is what I found on the internet. A submission, a submission from Trinidad and Tobago says the name Yaisa means gift of God and is, a, is of African origin. According to a user from California, US, the name Yaisa is of Mexican origin and means flower and love. And so this is what I found on the internet. But you know, we are Hebrew Israelites, so we go into the Hebrew. So what that did was, Genesis 18 and 25. So what I, did was I went into the Hebrew and I typed in Yah, which Yah is He, and I sh ah with an H at the end. I press enter. I got a couple of scriptures, but the one that caught my eye was this one, Genesis 18 and 25. And if you go into that word Aisha. It means to do. And a strong concordance says, accomplish, advance, appoint, amped to be at, become, bear, bestow, bring forth, br bruise, to be busy. So the, the first part of your name means he, which uh, spiritually seeing, spiritually looking at the matter, it looks like uh, he is uh, Yahweh which I was the heavenly father, and he appoints. You see, let's read further. Uh, to dress, uh, certainly have the charge of, commit, deal, deck, displease, do. To dress, to execute, exercise, fas fashion. These are the ones that caught my eye. To finish, to fit, fly, fulfill. So he fulfills. He's going to fulfill your destiny, Yaratazah, if you have the spirit on you, you know. To grant. Yahweh Basham is going to grant you mercy, Yaratazah. You know, spiritually seeing. Because you just came into the truth and since April. And Yaratazah, Yahweh Basham is going to grant you mercy. So that's what Aisha means. And with the Yah in front, he will grant. You see? Gone. So, but going into your dream right now, you started off with a vision. And this is what the Bible speaks on. This is uh, Joel 2, verse 28. It's Joel 2 verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Meaning all flesh. So even the heathens are getting dreams now that Jehovah Basham is going to come and that he's going to bring a sore slaughter onto mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. The, the, the men, they prophesy by saying the words of Jehovah Basham reading out the Bible. And your daughters will prophesy by dreaming. So when... Uh, a daughter of Israel, she had dreamt, then she's prophesying, you know. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, 
and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. God, so even the handmaids, which, which are the, the servants, you know, they are also going to have the, the spirit of Yahweh Basham Yahashai poured upon them. As it says, it's going to be poured upon all flesh. Gone, so lucky for that. But I got called for work. But yeah, to continue with, uh, with the breakdown of the dream. Yeah, so she had seen a city of gold. And this is, uh, let me jump to the scripture. This is Revelations 21, verse 18. Until 21. That's yeah, so like, can until 21. This is Revelation 21 and 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like onto clear glass. Gone. So that's what uh, what she see what she saw. So when she saw this, then she also saw that the pavement was gold. So the, the whole city was was glistening and uh, glimmering in gold. Verse 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third Chal chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth Chryso, Chrysophrasus, the eleventh, Jacinth, the twelfth, and Amethyst, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. Gone. So this is this is heavy, that you saw the a vision of the kingdom without even knowing the scriptures. Yeah, you probably might know this scripture, you know, that when you went to church that you probably heard it once and then you dreamt about it. But this is very spiritual, that you dreamt that everything was gold, even the pavement was gold, the streets were gold. And further, you explained that you saw that children were playing in the streets, you know. And this is, that goes into Zechariah 8 and 5. Let me see. Bear with me for a second, because I also had other precepts, but yeah, let me start with this. Zechariah. 8 and 4. Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Gone. So that means we're going to dwell safely. We're going to be in a safe haven. It's not going to be like how it is now that you're scared to let your child roam around the streets. You know, that the predator is going to snatch him up and that he's going to get sacrificed because uh, you have that strong bloodline and they want to uh, get that adrenalized uh, blood, the adrenochrome out of your child. You know, because there are numerous children and especially black children missing in America that haven't been found yet. You know, I have so many amber alerts and stuff like that where... People just lose their children because it's unsafe. Gone. So that's not going to be in the kingdom, man. You're going to have that our children are going to dwell and roam in the streets and dwell in safety. They, they are also going to have spiritual powers. They are also going to have, you know, uh, going to be immortal. As the scripture says, um, let me see. Come on. This is the book of 
Isaiah 65 verse 20. There shall be no more tents, an infant of days, meaning that there's not going to be untimely death, that an infant, that is a couple of days that he's going to uh, die. There's not going to be no more tents, an infant of days, nor an old man that had not filled his days. Gone. So he's going to be full of age when he, he decide, when he dies, you know, because back in the day we would live for hundreds of years. But now we have been shrunken and poisoned into the stature that we have right now. But in the kingdom, we're going to be back in our old status and our old uh, stature. For the child shall die a hundred years old, but the sinner being a hundred years old shall be accursed. Gone. So the sinner uh, that is going to be a hundred years old, he's going to be a curse. But a, a child shall die at a hundred years. You see? So even, even a child is not going to live until uh, eight years or ten years. A child of a hundred years. So you have to understand that, meditate upon that. A hundred years is not for a child. A hundred years, that means you're your grandfather. You know, but in the kingdom, a child is going to be a hundred years. You're going to be considered a child if you're only a hundred years. See? So let's go back to Zechariah 8, because now she explained that we were of one mind and we knew what had happened unto us. And that's basically speaking about this, Zechariah 18. And 14. Zechariah 8 and 14. For thus said Yahweh of hosts, as I thought to punish you when your fathers provoked me to wrath. This is the reason why we got punished. This is the reason why we are in this situation that we are in right now. That we are accursed. That we are um, being killed by the oppressor. We, we brought it upon ourselves because of our forefathers. So when your fathers provoked me to wrath, said Yahweh of hosts, and I repented not. So the Most High, he didn't change his mind. That's what uh, repentance means. So he didn't change his mind not to bring wrath upon Israel. Verse 15. So again have I thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Fear ye not. Gun. So the Most High also promised that he was going to do well and do good unto the house of Jerusalem and the house of Judah. Jerusalem is uh, the northern tribe, represents the northern tribe, and Judah represents the southern tribe. So fear ye not. Yahweh Shem is going to make good. He's going he's gonna to keep his promise, not because of our sakes, but because of his sake, because he made a promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's not going to repent from that. Let's go to the book of Baruch. For the infamous scripture, Baruch 4 and 6. For ye will sow to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Yahweh to wrath, ye were, there, you, so like, ye were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see? So that's why we were put into the situation that we're in right now. Because we move Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai unto wrath. Because we sacrifice unto devils. Because of our forefathers. That's what our forefathers did. You see? But there's a, yet a remnant that is going to come back. And all of this, according to her dream, we knew all these things. Isaiah 65, verse 6 and 7. is Isaiah 65, verse 6. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silence but will recompense, even recompense into their bosom, your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, said Yahweh, Bahasham Yahushai. 
which have burnt incense upon the mountains and blasphemed me upon the hills, therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. Come on, you see, so we moved Yahweh Basham Yahushai onto wrath because of these acts that we did, sacrificing unto devils, burning incense upon high mountains, you know, um, um, sacrificing swine's flesh upon the altar, stuff like that. So he's going to eat. He has. He's, he said he's going to recompense. He's not going to keep silent. So that's what he's doing right now, especially, uh, yeah, because of the two thirds. That's what the two thirds did. You see, the two thirds, their fathers did these these kind of hideous things. So, Yahabashem Yahushai is recompensing that onto their own bosom. That's why you see a whole lot of people are dying left and right right now. So it's all coming full full circle. The whole Black Lives Matter thing is because of Yahweh Hashem Yahusha is putting out judgment. He's putting out, he's got hitmen out for uh, these so-called black people, which they're actually Israelite, the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Yahweh Hashem Yahusha, who is our God, who is our power, he has a, a hit out on this nation because of their iniquities and the iniquities of their forefathers. And that's what's rousing Jacob also, you see. Because the enemies are killing Jake, and then he comes with his Black Lives Matter. That's all full circle. That's all the plan of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Because who is going to rouse J Judah up? Yahweh Hashem Yahushai by doing these acts. You see. So let's go to the book of Jeremiah. Thirty-one. Verse 34. Because this is the part where she also spoke about that we all had one mind, that we were in sync, that we were in harmony, that we were all loving towards one another. This is Zechariah 31, verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye Yahweh, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. See, so they all will know Yahweh, from the least, from the children, until the until the greatest of them, you know. So everybody is going to be in, in sync, in one accord, they're all going to know what happened and what righteousness is, why we are why we went through what we went through and they are all going to know that Jehovah Hashem Yahushai is our power right now you see there's not going to be any untimely death because we are going to be immortal as she so beautifully described and that leads me to one of my favorite scriptures because Wisdom of Solomon 1 verse 15 for righteousness is immortal. Let me see. Gone. So righteousness is immortal. Meaning, we are going to be all righteous. As it says in the book of Isaiah. Bear with me for a second. Isaiah 60. Isaiah 60 verse 21 Thy people also shall be all righteous So what did we just read? Righteousness is immortal So being righteous is going to lead unto immortality So let's read it again Thy people also shall be all righteous They shall inherit the land forever The breach, so like yeah, the branch of my planting The work of my hands that I may be glorified, God. So we are going to glorify Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and going to inherit all the blessings that were explained in Deuteronomy 28. You see, we are going to be a huge nation. Nation. Verse 22: A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation, God. Because we are little right now. We are babes and uh, you know sucklings. We. We all are babes, except for the apostles, you know, and the elders. So 
we Yaratza, we're gonna some of us are gonna become a thousand and some of us are gonna become a strong nation you see because in that day we are gonna reproduce because the two-thirds of our nation is gonna die and we are gonna have to bring them back so that means a lot of baby making a lot of <laughs> love making you know so that's what the scripture explains that one little one because we are little right now we are babes in the street shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation i yahweh will hasten it in this time in his time come okay, so let's go to second ezra's two first 45 he answered and said unto me these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of yahweh bahasham yahweh shai now are they crowned and receive palms so this is our description to, sh to show you that we are going to inherit immortality you know so it's not something that she just dreamt out of the blue it's all scriptural and then she saw Esau. She saw Esau outside of the gate. But Esau is going to be in a slavery for a thousand years. Let me see. This is Revelations. This is Revelations 20 verse 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And the rest of the dead is speaking about these other nations. You see? They are going to go back to their dwelling places as Yahweh Bashem Yahweh has ordained it. But they all are going to be in hardcore slavery for a thousand years. You see? So, the next thing that she spoke about, if my memory serves me correctly, is that she was in a spaceship, in a spacecraft, and those are basically the chariots, the chariots of salvation, the chariots of the Most High. And we are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, as it says in 1 Corinthians 10, that we have to be changed to be able to go into these chariots. We have to be made all righteous. We, because incorrupt, incorruption can't inherit the things like going into the chariot, because our flesh is, is, not, uh, is not incorruptible. Our flesh is corrupt, you see? So that's what we use in her dream to go to these other nations. And the thing is, she said we went to Moabites because the Moabites are the Chinese looking people with big, head and, big heads and flat faces. And she said that we went to correct them or to bless them. So that leads me back to Isaiah 60. Kind of one of the things that she also said is that everybody's, all the women are going to be under their husband and they are going to be glad to be under their husband. And that's speaking about uh, 1 Corinthians 11, where it speaks about what the order is. So they're not going to buck up against us in the kingdom because they're going to have they're going to be in the right state of mind because Eve on this side, the so-called black woman, is not in her good mind on this side because she follows the serpent. She does everything that the serpent says so that she can get the benefits from the serpent. And the serpent is the so-called white man because he comes with a snake tongue, you know, trying to give her benefits. But she, he's breaking the family structure at the same time. He's He's devastating the children making her get a, a huge ego and destroying the 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 foundation of the house you know she he's destroying the man 
he's he's making a contract with a woman with Eve with the so-called black female to help her break the the so-called black man because it's not only the so-called white man that is trying to break us but now you also have our females our women that they are against us yeah man that's not gonna be in the kingdom anymore they're gonna be in their right mind and they're gonna be happy also so this is isaiah 60 verse 11 therefore thy gates shall be opened continually the gates of the kingdom they shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the gentiles and the forces are speaking about the wealth they are gonna be bearing gifts they're gonna come to us bearing gifts and that their kings may be brought for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish yea those nations shall be utterly wasted God, so everybody is going to serve us we are going to police the the whole earth like how america is trying to be the police of the earth the whole earth right now but now we are going to inherit yaratza the kingdom that i'm of that number and that we are going to inherit the kingdom and that we are going to police them we are going to let everybody live by our laws the most just laws of the most high you see and that's how we're going to correct them and the thing that um she also said that they're gonna get blessings from us what is gonna be their blessing that we take their wives that we take uh, slack and other wives that we take women of their nation as a wife that we take their daughters you know that's gonna be a blessing unto them that they can be able to say that one of my daughters went to one of the elect one of the elect men which is the elect men is the 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 horn of the people of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, which means the mountain, which means the governing body of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So that's how we're going to bless them by taking their, their daughters. Amen. So, Lord willing, you got your answer, you got the breakdown from your dream. And Yahweh Taza, this video was edifying. I want to say, Kal Halal Yom La, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, Bashem Rekha Kodash, Shalom Akyam. Wa akwatiam. Shalom.